Hey, what's up and welcome back to the multiples of 100 plus data science project series. In this video, we are going to discuss about the cryptocurrency price predictor using the deep learning. This is the application that you're going to build on here that's called cryptocurrency Bitcoin price predictor. And if I give one Bitcoin name or Bitcoin ticker and let's say giving the 10 days to predict and if I click on predict, it will give you the predictions for the upcoming prices. Okay, you can see here closing price over time, original versus predicted test data, then it has the future close price predictions and as well as the predicted close price. You can see 9325 T's closest price right now for the first test. Last 10 days you can return here. Okay, so this is the applications that you're going to build on this tutorial. So without wasting your time, har har mahadev balke start the tutorial. Well, so now what I can do, I am simply going to load the data set from the Yahoo Finance website using the Y Finance library as well as I'm going to import in here some of the important libraries just like Pandas, NumPy and the Matplotlib. So first I'm going to import in here the Y Finance as YF and after that I'm going to import in here the Pandas as PD then import NumPy as NP and after that I'm going to import in here the Mat uh, plot lib dot pi plot as plt as well as i'm going to import the date time let's say from date time uh, i'm going to importing here the date time let's import date time cool and also i'm going to giving some style let's say plt dot style dot use of let's say 5 uh, 38 that's nothing but the style of the our graph okay so shift enter or you can using here the run button okay why finance okay it should be finance okay f i n a n okay why finance cool okay now you can see here uh, it is uh, loaded your static sign yeah now you can see it loaded cool now what i can do i need to actually give here one end date and also when i start date right so let's say end is equal to date time dot now that's been two day date okay and after that the start date is nothing but let's say uh let's say previous 10 years i'm going to actually start his data from the website okay so what i can do i can using here date time and after that you can giving here and dot year minus let's say 15 year okay before 15 year i'm going to collecting all the data from our yahoo finance website and after that i'm giving here the month let's say month and then and you can giving here and dot day well now i need to give in the stock okay i need to give in the stock so let's go on the yahoo finance website so here you go this is the website and now what i can do i can search for let's say btc usd okay you can see here this is a cryptocurrency okay this is a cryptocurrency you can using here this as btc usdc as well okay you can use any of them okay because this bitcoin you're actually working on bitcoin so you're going to using this one btc and the hyphen usd this is nothing but the entity name so we're going to be using this one as a stock name okay so let's go on here and then after the stock inside the stock what we can using here btc usd you can use any of them the stock one okay and after that i need to actually download this data set right so how can i download that you can download it using w so yf not w actually yf dot download and inside the sections i need to give in here my stock i mean our source and as well as the start date, the start is nothing but my start and end date is nothing but my end date. And let's assign into a variable called let's say stock data. Okay, let's say stock underscore data. Cool. Now you can see here it will 100% download the data set from the website. Now you can also checking this out. Let's say stock uh, underscore data dot hat. Okay. We can check in this one. This is started for 2014. Okay, that's been after before the 10 years. Okay, before 10 years, the stock is actually you actually actually a stock is actually coming into the market and data is nothing but coming from 2014. Okay, but are you giving the uh, the 15 years ago? Okay, no problem. It will if it is give get the data from the 15 years also, so it will give me this uh, data set from the directory or data set from the Yahoo Finance website. But it having some data based on the 10 years, so that's why it giving started from the 2014. Okay, cool. Now what I can do, we can also check in the tail of that. So let's say stock. Uh, underscore data dot tail okay so you can see here uh, we have the data of 2024 11 and the 20 okay 11 and the 20 right now 
uh, is nothing but the 20 November. Okay, it's, yeah, it's 20 November and Wednesday. So today we have the data as well. Okay, adjusted close is 9362 uh, and close is nothing but 69362 uh, for USD. And the uh, opening price is nothing but 92381. Cool. Now, what I can do, I am simply going to discover the data. So let's try to take some shell and let's say stock. Uh, stock data dot describe. I have been some problem in the uh, in my biases uh, just because of a uh, heavy fever. Uh, but yes, uh, this series actually give me so much kind of responses. That's why I decided that no problem about the fever or anything else. Uh, let's sit for recording the videos. Okay, so that's why I sit it down. But having some problem on the bias issue, just consider it. Okay. So yeah, we can see here or you can go in here the count, the mean, the standard deviations, the minimum, 25% percentile, 50%, 75% and the maximum value for that. We can also make it transport. Now you can see here in the this manner. Okay. Now the count, mean, standard derivations, minimum, 25%, 50%, 75% maximum value of that. Okay. So this is the count of how many rows and the how many uh, columns are available on that. Because of checking that uh, the information regarding our data set. So let's say stock, let's say stock uh, underscore data dot info. Okay, you can see here uh, we see 3718 and also 3718. So all of the counties are same. Okay, all of the counties same. So that means you don't have any NAND value. You don't have any NAND value, which one you don't need to handle it out. Okay. That's mean handling uh, data or missing is not necessary here because it don't have any NAND value yet. Okay, so now what I can do is simply going to uh, jump on the uh, features column and try to explore it more. So let's first uh, try to checking for the close uh, close price data because it is it's the important in the stock prices or or the cryptocurrency or the Bitcoin this. A close price data is important because based on that we can do the stocking. We can um, we can actually do the uh, Bitcoin pricing. Okay, Bitcoin mining like that. So closing price is important here in this case. So what I can do is simply go to checking this one. Let's say stock data, and inside that we can checking for the close. So let's say close because we have this close as well. You can say close as well. So if I am trying to uh, checking the column from each of the data. And you can check in like this. Let's stock data dot columns. We can check in like this. So you can see here it having the uh, close as well. You can see close. Okay, adjusted close and the close. Okay, so then we have the, we got here the close, but we get you give here two bracket. You can see two bracket. Why? Because it is nothing but one inside one tuple. Okay, it's nothing but the multi index. That's why you need to do doing these things in, like this uh, for indexing purpose. So this is nothing but by closing data. So let's say closing closing data so yeah it's loaded okay we can check in this close this data or closing price let's say uh, closing price it should be good paisa hey paisa bahut paisa okay this is the closing price that is extracted on here now what you can do i am simply going to float it down okay so let's say uh float let's say p should be capital float closing price Okay, closing price with let's say enhancement. Okay, and uh, enhancement. Cool. Now let's try to float it out. Let's say plt dot figure. Let's check the graph of that how the closing price actually look like. So we can giving one figure size, and after that we can giving here let's say fifteen comma six, and then after that I'm simply going to float it out. Let's say plt dot float. And inside that, after giving the x-axis, it should be the closing, uh, closing price dot index. And inside the y-index, we're going to giving here the closing price of the close. Okay, so this is the closing price, right? Now, if I want to starting here this close, so what I can do, I can using here same technique, this technique, right? Close like this. One. Now I have all of the data, right? Same thing. Okay. I don't need to using here this one, this uh, two bracketed as well. So I can use the single bracket one in the Y index. And after that, I can give me the level. So let's say level is nothing but uh, let's say close price. 
and after that I need to give him some color so let's say color let's say blue color and then I can give him the line width let's say line width uh -huh. width is equal to let's say 2 fine now after that I can give him a title let's say plt.title and inside that I can give him one title let's call close price of uh, Bitcoin over time okay we can say that let's say font size let's say 60 and after that I can giving the X level so let's give it out let's say X level let's say this is nothing but the years and inside that you can give in the font size let's say font size let's say 40 and same thing for the Y level we can giving this one let's say close price because you based on the close price we simply going to do the floating right let's say 14 and then we can giving one grid so that it look better and you can also check this one based on the year so let's say alpha is less than 0 0.3 and then i'm going to using here the legend and inside this legend i can give in the font size let's say font size equal to let's say 12 lap and then i'm going to using a plt.show okay okay it's coming let me drink some water hot water okay fine now you can see uh we can some kind of grid and alpha is nothing but 0 0.3 you can see like this right? it's nothing but the intensity of the color and you can see here how the bitcoin price is increases in the 2006 2040 start from 2040 and how the data is actually increases in 2018 the data also increases here but down again and after that in the cowboy time it will again increases after the cowboy time for the now you can see is this the a time for the cowboy right 2019 to 2022 21 it's a cowboy time you can see price is nothing but minimizes but higher and it's coming to after the 2021 to 2022 you can see how the price is decreases and after the same thing is also key decreases but again in the middle of the 2024 again it will increases now you can see increases and now it's also increases the price of the bitcoin is right now increases over time okay so you can check in this on how it actually look like you can also see this kind of graph in the google as well okay now let's try to uh do some uh use some technique just like call the moving average okay let's say moving average this is the actual concept in the stock prices because uh the bitcoin or cryptocurrency is nothing but a stock it's nothing but a stock so you can apply here the moving average now the question is what is sir moving average let's say let's take one example let's say 20, 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 let's say 90 and 100 okay this is nothing but some of the data some of the data for the let's say day okay so let's assign it to be able called tm data so let's say i am simply going to uh, calculate the moving average for the five days okay moving abaris okay abaris okay abar h for as a five death that's mean i'm going to calculate the moving average for the five deaths this five deaths that's mean if i'm going to calculate this moving average for the 10 it should be the null because before that before that just like the uh, problem in the stack okay you are actually using here just the next greater element or okay or the next large element if you don't have any value, you can return here minus one. Okay, I am actually talking about the DSA. Okay, if you don't have any value, you can return here the minus one. But in this case, you need to return here the NAN or the null. So if I want to calculate the moving average for the five days for the tens, it can be null. It should be null. It should be null like that. It should be null. Now, same thing for 20 because it don't have any five days uh, in the before. It should be null. Then for the 30, it should be null. And 40, it should be null. And after 50, what I can do? we got some values of the five days how we can join all of them join all of them and divide them by five okay so we got in here 13.0 like this way and same thing for the 60 we're going to calculate all of them and divide by them five from the 20 to 50 okay then we can got here 14.0 like that if we're going to let's say try to uh, use one statement let's call sum of the tem data let's say tem underscore data and inside the time data we're taking the from 0 to 5 index for the 5 days and divide by 5 and now you can see okay any problem any problem time data okay time data 
and some of them okay i need to actually using here one bracket on here and i'm closing this one now you can see got here 30 and if i'm going to starting from one to six one to six then you can see i got here 40 this one this is how the moving average is calculated if you want to convert them into the pandas data frame how i can do that you can import in the pandas yeah you already import the pandas so let's say pd uh, dot data frame okay data frame and to convert in the data frame and after that you can using one one a technique for the moving average so i simply going to pass in here my time data let's say time data so let's say this is nothing but let's say df1 okay now if i am going to apply here the moving average so there's a method called rolling okay so i need to keep it a five and after that i need to take in the mean of that okay and you're taking the mean and now you can see here all of the value for the index number four zero is nan 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 13 14 15 16 17 18 right so this is the same technique that we are going to using it here now the question is sir you can give in here for five days now how can i calculate the for the data set how many day, days we can taking out from here how many days we can taking out from here for our data so what i can do we can simply go into using here and follow let's say for i in brains and after that we simply going to counting it out so data is starting for 2014 to 2024 right now and then i am simply going to printing here one statement let's say print the i that's the number of values and i'm simply going to getting one list of that based on my stock data okay that's my stock data and dot index dot year because I need to do it based on the year. And after that, I can give here the count of that. Let's say count of i. Count of i. Now you can see here the maximum value is nothing but 365. It's that means one year. And the minimum is nothing but 106. That's mean we can do the moving average for the 100 days and the 365 days. Simple. Now let's try to apply it in our closing value, in our closing prices. So what I can do, I am simply going to uh, do it for the closing price so let's say closing price okay then inside that i can give in here moving average of 365 okay 365 days and after that let's say closing price and of the close okay any <coughs> dot rolling and then inside the window size what i can do we can use it here let's say 365 dot min okay we can use it and after that you can copy this out and we can pass it here for the 100 s okay that's a 100 okay so we calculate the moving average for 365 days and as well as the moving average for the hundred days okay and window should be the hundred cool yeah it's calculated now what you can do we simply going to do the floating for the moving average just for checking that yeah moving average is working or not okay and after that you can using here the uh, machine learning algorithm we can copy this one and and it took past here for the two time one is for moving average 365 and another one is nothing but for the uh, moving average for the 100 days so let's say it's nothing but moving average of 365 and the label is nothing but let's say 365 moving average okay let's say giving on color let's say give it red color and let's say dating call green color and you can giving some line style as well so let's say line style line style is equal to let's say style and then we can using here comma and i can copy this out and simply going to pass it here okay and this is should be the moving average for 100 days okay it should be the 100 and we can copy this out and we can pass it here and this is for 100 days okay it can be let's say 100 days and this should be the 100 days and now let's also do some changes on the closing price with let's say with moving average okay moving average and it should be here and it should be the price okay now we can check in this one 
okay you can see here uh, how the moving average is actually calculated and as well as you can see graph or oh, we can actually we can get some significant we cannot get the significant value on the moving average okay it's so many distance on the moving average using moving average you can actually calculate the predicted value as well but for the last one day but if you want to calculate the prediction for last 100 days or last 10 days you can do it using moving average okay you cannot do it using moving average using moving average yeah you can actually predict for the next day but if you want to predict for the last 10 days or last 20 days you can do it because this is a time series data and moving average is nothing but working on the just next what prediction types data so you can't using the moving average in this scenario yeah it can be give the value but not but you can see in the bitcoin it not actually give the correct uh, correct data for the stock you can actually using here this moving average or the exponential moving average technique but bitcoin it's fail so what can we do right now we can using here the lstm we can using here lstm so lstm is nothing but called long short term memory so now the question is sir why lstm why not rnn and why we should use the rnn and why lstm because see bro see this is a time series data based on the time the date it will increasing its stock it is increasing the price the bitcoin yeah that's why it is a time series types of data in the time series data you need to storing here the previous actions you need to store the previous action that's why the rnn is come into the pictures but rnn having some drawback it can store more than data okay so that's why lstm is come into the picture and you're going to be using here the lstm for this case now what i can do i am simply going to importing all of the important library and after that i'm going to starting building our model so what i can do now i am simply going to first scale the data okay scale the data okay so scale the data why see this is the data is having so many gap okay so many variation if you were to put it inside one machine learning model you need to scale it down inside between minus one to one or zero to one so for this case we can using here the min max scalar so let's say from sklearn dot pre-processing we can uh, importing here the let's say processing we can importing here the min max scalar let's say min max scalar and after that i'm going to creating one instance of the scalar let's say min uh, max scalar and inside that you're giving one feature range you to give one few feature range let's say feature range you can give it here minus one to one or zero to one let's give it here zero to one and after that what i can do i can fit it out it's a scalar dot fit and inside that uh okay it should be fit transform because we will to fit as a transform in our training data okay fit transform and i can giving here the closing price and after that i need to giving here the close and also i need to drop the nan value from here so i can simply going to using here the drop nan for removing the nan value from here so it should be the scale data scale data okay it should be scale data oh again same thing okay so let's shift enter now yeah it's done now let's try to print our scale data and also start building our lstm model let's see the scale data i can copy this out and we can check in this one this is a scale data and range is between nothing but zero to one now uh, we can simply go to importing here some other library let's say from keras dot models i am going to importing here the sequential okay sequential model okay let's say sequential and after that i am going to import from keras dot layers i am going to importing here the dance layer and the lstm layer okay and now we simply going to okay sequ okay sequential is coming for the two times okay now we simply going to prepare our data uh prepare uh data for lstm okay let's try to prepare our data set for the lstm which one is taking uh, we can which one you can actually 
pass through your LSTM model. So what I can do, I am simply going to let's say for i in range. So we having one base day. Okay. So let's assume the base day is nothing but the let's say 100 days. Let's say base days. Uh, let's say 100 days. So I'm going to start it from here. Base days. Uh, then scale date. Okay. Let's say a scale data. Okay. Scale data. This is nothing but our scale data from the length of the scale data. We can check in on here. We can check in the length of the scale data. So this is that. How many deaths? It has been 3718 deaths. Okay, fine. Now we simply going to append it inside our X and the Y. I mean dependent and the independent feature. Let's say X data is nothing but a list and the Y data is nothing but a list. Now I am simply going to append all of the data inside our x data dot append and inside that I can give it here my scale data let's say a scale data and based on that I can minus the base day I can minus the base day before the 100 days I am not going to calculate this one from to i okay that's when before the 100 it should be removed because it will actually applying here this moving average technique if you see that the moving average this first five days value is nothing but zero is nothing but the zero now we simply in the pass in this moving average technique inside our lstm okay so that's why we can minus it from here if i minus from 100 to 100 it should be starting from zero that's in first 100 column first 100 row is nothing but the zeros it's nothing but the zeros now we can using here let's say y data dot append Okay, this is the target column. So you can simply going to passing here scaled. Okay, a scaled data of i. Simple. Okay. Now let's try to append it and also convert them into the numpy array. Let's say x data equal to uh, np dot array and the x data and as well as the same thing for the y data as well. Okay. Let's say this is the y and this is also y fine okay it's important now let's try to split the data set into training and the testing okay let's say split uh, into oh, 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 train and test sets okay so what I can do let's say train uh, size let's say is nothing but from length of the X data we can take in the 80% or the 90% whatever but because this is a Bitcoin data, let's better it's, you can take in the 90% for the training and 10% for the testing. Okay. So we can use it here and try to convert them into the integer. So let's say this is the integer. And after that, let's we have the X train and the Y train data. Let's, let's say Y train. So what we have from the X data, from the X data, we're taking all of the train data size based on the train size and on the Y data, we are simply going to taking the rest of them train size okay and now let's about is it's the about the x test and the y test so if i taking the rest of them we take the first of first all of the data for the 90 percent data now rest of them should be our test data right so we can using your let's say x test and the y test should be our rest of the data let's say x data of the train size rest of them and then for the y data it should be the rest of them let's say train size of the rest of them okay so see train size is nothing but calculate like this way length of the x data and multiply into 90 that's 90 percent of the data and x train and the y train and also taking the first of the 90 percent of the data inside our x train and the inside our y train we have the rest of the data from the y data okay and the rest of them we're taking it from here after this 10% uh, data is nothing but coming from the x data x test and the y test okay same thing from here shift enter yeah it is working now what you can do i am simply going to building our lstm model let's say model is equal to sequential and inside that we can giving here our lstm so let's say lstm let's say 128 of units and you can give me the return sequences so let's say return sequences if let's say true 
for the first one the input one you're going to simply going to return the sequences and after that you're also giving here the input shape that's the input underscore shape if nothing but let's say x train dot shape of the one and as well as the unit giving here the one because we have just one input because it's an and also nlp tux so you can copy this one and after that we can adding here the another layer of 64 units 64 units and inside that we need to, need to giving here the input shape because input shape is nothing but taken for the first one okay so let's make it false and then we can adding here one dense layer let's say comma and the comma and then we can adding here one dense layer and inside this dense layer let's giving here 25 and now this is the final layer is cutting ball called the dense uh dense layer of the one so one is nothing but our output okay that's why this is the output uh the output uh layer okay so our model is ready now we can simply going to compile it out let's say model dot compile before training our model we need to also compile our model so let's say optimizer is equal let's say adam optimizer we can using it here adam optimizer and as well as using the loss is nothing but let's say using here the mean f squared error okay squared error and then we can using here model dot summary in order to see our model okay any error yeah it should be comma and let's run it here now we can see our model structure how it will look like and how many parameters it have total parameter and the trainable parameter and the number of trainable parameter as well now we can simply going to fit with our model let's say model dot fit and inside that i can give it here my x train and the y train data and then i can giving the batch size that's a batch size let's say five and after that i can using an epochs okay so let's actually go for tan epochs and after that we simply going to increase it or you can also increase it for the best prediction okay so we can see here epochs one is started so when the epochs is done and i'll get back again well so our model training is completed so let's take some shell and also do the predictions so let's say model dot predict and after that you can giving here the x test data and that's nothing but our predictions so let's say predictions and then what i can do uh we need to also do the inverse transform of our scale data in order to predict it out so let's say scale uh data and we can using here let's say scalar okay it should be scalar dot inverse transform okay let's say inverse transform so why actually inverse transform because see uh how in actually scale our data and if we want to get back to the again we need to also make it inverse transform okay now inside that i can pass in here my predictions okay predictions in order to getting here our actual value so this is nothing but my inverse predictions okay predictions okay it should be inverse let's say underscore predictions now let's try to do it for the the white is data so what you can do we can using here let's say scalar dot inverse transform same thing inverse transform and inside that we can passing here the white is data so this is nothing but our inverse inverse y underscore test cool now uh, it will taking a uh, second few seconds and it will take in about 12 steps and it will now give me the predictions now what i can do uh, i can show this out these predictions now you can see this is the predictions okay now you can also show it out inverse predictions inverse prediction this is nothing but the values you can see this is nothing but the values okay you can see the values and if i go down you can see here so many values okay like this then uh, <clears throat> after that if i check in this inverse y test this is also some kind of values okay on the testing data you can see nine three six two four okay this is nothing but my predictions okay in our testing data now what i can do i am simply going to creating one plot for the predictions with the actual values so let's try to floating around let's say floating data let's say floating underscore data is nothing but first going to make it inside a data frame okay and after that i am going to uh, creating here one dictionary 
so let's say dictionary and inside this dictionary we are having some value called original so original okay original so this is nothing but my inverse uh, y dot test and this is nothing but should be my flatten okay and after that what we have we have the predictions okay so let's say predictions okay the prediction is nothing but my inverse transform inverse of the prediction okay predictions dot flatten that's it okay now uh, we can into giving here the index number so we can give it here let's say index is equal to our closing price okay closing prices price dot index of the train size train size plus the base day that we already initialize okay base days to rest of them okay that's nothing but by closing prices okay so we can uh, give it here one thing we can uh, follow up there yes it's okay fine now we can actually do the floating so what you can do i am simply going to copy the float from here this sections i'm going to copy from here and after that i can do some changes on that let's try to uh, pass it out and do some changes on that so let's remove the last one and we have the closing price dot index it should be our floating data uh, floating data dot index and it should be the floating data and it's also floating data floating data and it should be the original and as well as the predictions okay or you can say predicted so this is the predictions okay so you can say this label as a prediction level and this is nothing but the original level so let's say original level so color is okay line height line weight is okay you can also removing this line and star from here because it's not needed at all okay so this is our floating data now we can we need to actually do some changes on here so it should be the prediction versus actual value so let's say prediction uh, versus actual okay actual uh, actual value okay or let's say actual close price so let's say close price and this is the years and this is the close price so let's say close price shift enter okay now you can see how the graph is look like it is really good that our model is working very fine but if you increasing this epoch size to the 20 or 30 you can also get more kind of accuracy better accuracy you can get right so now what you can do uh, i am simply going to also uh, try to predicting it for the next 100 days or next 10 days like this way so let's say predict the future days let's say predict future days this is the way that's why actually doing this predictions that's why we're building our prediction model. So let's say last hundred data. Let's say last hundred. We're simply going to taking it from our scale data. Let's say scale data. And then we can take in the last hundred. Okay. And then we're simply going to reshape it. Let's say reshape it. Reshape it with the one to minus one to one. Okay. That's our last hundred data. The scale data, we're taking the last hundred, the rest of them, and after that, we reshape it then what you can do we can save me let's say for let's i or you can say you can using here the underscore sign okay let's say because i is not going to use it here okay that's why so we're, you're going to predict for the last 10 days so 10 days let's say next death equal to let's say model uh, dot predict of the last death okay last 100 days let's last 100 days okay and after that what you can do we need to do the future predictions so let's say uh, we can actually creating here one variable called future predictions so predictions okay future predictions we can creating one list of them and inside this list we can simply going to store all of the values so let's say future predictions dot append and inside that i can passing here my scalar i mean my scalar dot inverse transform okay that's inverse transform of the next day okay next is this next is and now the last hundred okay last underscore hundred is equal to np dot append of the last hundred okay last hundred of the full value to the one of the two the last and the last of them okay then after that we can using here the next test dot reshape and we need to reshape it out reshaping here let's say one comma one comma minus one okay and the axis is nothing but axis is nothing but the column axis that's in one 
Now enter. Now you can see here it will predict the all the values. Now if I see checking this is last hundred, then you can see here some value is appear on here. And if you checking for the future predictions, you can also get some values. Okay, future prediction is nothing but the ten values. It's give me the future predictions. Okay. Now uh, we can actually uh, do some floating on that on the future predictions. So what I can do, it can do the future let's say prediction, future underscore predictions, and then we can convert them into an NumPy array, and after that it can passing to this future predictions. Okay, this future uh, predictions into the flatten. So that flatten is nothing but using in a <laughs> uh, is using in actually deep learning. Okay, in a deep learning. Flattens means simply going to convert these uh, multi index array into one single kind of vector. Okay, that's called the flatten. Now we're simply going to uh, floating this out. So for floating, we can copy this thing, but don't don't need to some changes on that floating. And we need to do some floating on the let's say this remove this one. And inside of our floating index, we can giving one range. So range is nothing but the 10. So let's say 1 to 11. Okay, because in the range method, you know, to giving the last is nothing but minus one. And then we can give in the future predictions. So it should be the future predictions. And we can give in the markers. So let's say mar, okay, marker, okay, marker, let's say O. O. And after that, we can give in the label. So let's say prediction uh, future prices. Okay, like this one. And we can give in the color, let's say give it the uh, purple color. Okay, let's say purple color. And then you can give in the line width or line height, whatever you have. Okay, now I need to add another float. So let's say this is nothing but for the tan dash. Let's say for i in val in enumerate. Okay, we need to give in here uh, the future predictions. So let's say future predictions. And inside the future prediction, I need to enumerate here the value. Because this is the future prediction uh, uh, one list, so it will having one index number as well as it having the bells. So what I can do, I can give in the text on that uh, in our prediction, and after that I can giving here let's i plus one, and I can using here on f string, and inside this f string I can using here the curly bracket, and the value is nothing but the uh, let's say point two f, okay, floating point number. Now after that, after that what I can do, I can using the font size. So let's say font size is nothing but let's say 10 and then h is nothing but my height of the color h is nothing but center and then i can giving here the top and the bottom b a is equal to let's say uh bottom and then i can giving here the color let's say giving here the black color okay let's say the black color cool so this is nothing but the future okay future future close price prices for tenders and this is the day ahead let's say day ahead and then this is the close price okay we can use it right now okay this is one argument positional argument is called as so why this error i plus one plt dot text okay missing one required position I'm going to call the s so we have the marker okay text is i plus one okay we're not also giving the value right so let's say value okay now you can see how the value look like the first one is nothing but eight nine uh, four eight two right now is predicted okay not so bad if, if you're running this one uh if you're running this one uh, which one? This one is a for let's say 30 epochs. It will give you the most accurate result. It will give you the most accurate result. Okay. So now what I can do, I am simply going to saving our model. So let's say model dot save. Let's say model dot cast. Or you can say use here the each file like that. Okay. Now model is saved. Okay. You can see model is saved. Now using this model, we can building on uh, applications inside the flux okay is in the flux framework let's go on the bs code and try to check in this one that's how it actually work okay so well so right now we are in a bs code and this is the code for that it's called app.pr file this is nothing but the flux 
uh, file in writing the server side code and also inside the sections you can see here one folder called templates and inside this template you having three html file base.html english.html and the result.html so now what i can do first i am going to actually run in these applications and after that i will let you know that how this application actually works and that designing same thing okay so let's closing this out and try to checking and waiting for it because it will obviously taking time because it is loading the model from here you can see we have our model uh, model.caros that we already imported on here and also i give some comment on that if you uh you actually get this code in the github so that you can read the comment and you can uh, make it because the comment is actually necessary for writing the codes clean code so let's go on this link and then you can see just a white 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 ajo, 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 ajo. quick 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 load ho job because <laughs> it is loading in the flux applications okay yeah it's coming up now let's giving here the stock ticker let's giving here btc usd and number of deaths how many deaths you want to predict let's say 10 deaths and click on predict and you can see cryptocurrency bitcoin price predictor and also having one coal number you can see cryptocurrency bitcoin price predictor and you can see here closing price over times and over times how it will look like then it having the original price versus a predicted price then it having you can see the feature close price predictions and the prediction price is nothing but the 93085 this is the predicted close price okay so now let's go on the website and try to checking on here let's say one usd okay one btc to usd okay btc to usd and we can see here nine four three uh seven six close but if i checking on that on the data because we are recording for the one hour we checking this is nothing but close to nine three one to one like this way okay okay so we also getting here the best result on that you can see nine three zero eight five not so bad not so bad you can see not so bad okay that's when our application really working very fine okay don't have any don't have any this kind of a gap okay i don't see any gap right here okay now let's try to implement this one okay <laughs> okay this one okay so let's go on the full screen mode and try to break through down all of the component okay so what i can do now uh let's try to go inside our templates folder and you having one base.html this is the base and in our base.html we just having one napper which one is nothing but static so that's why you're simply going to creating here one base.html and inside this base.html we actually apply here i mean add here our cdn for the bootstrap we use here the cdn for the bootstrap and after that we're simply going to taking one nap key okay nap tag okay and instead of snap tag we having one dip and then we actually add here one name that's called cryptocurrency bitcoin price predictor this is nothing but my napper which one is really static if i see this application you can see that uh, this is a napper this is a static here and this is actually standard extended this base.html to the index.html so for that you can see here after that after this container and after this nap tag we're going to start actually starting here another block content we're going to starting here the another block content and this block content is nothing but our index.html this is nothing but our index.html so that's why you can see here we're using here a keyword called extends this base.html that's when after the base.html it will starting this block content to the end block and after that it will extend this index.html just like the react okay just creating this ui in some kind of component called base.html and index.html is also one component and after that we simply going to extend it and then we start here the block content and also the end block now inside this content what you have we have on one h1 tag that's called the cryptocurrency bitcoin price predictor that you can see uh on here or not yeah back home yeah, yeah you can see cryptocurrency bitcoin price predictor this one and after that we're having on from so inside this from we have a method called post method and action is performed on the first route or the home route or the index route and then we having one label is nothing but for the stock ticker you can see a stock ticker you can stock ticker and also an input tag and also type is text class is from control and id is stock and name is stock this name is important 
name is important here because using this one we can we can call it in our app.py file i mean our server side file and inside the placeholder is simply going to giving an example and also giving here one required key because it's required if you don't give it it will give you error and after that we simply going to adding another label for number of dash to print it that's been how many dash you're going to print it out okay so if i see this one you can see number of dash to print it then you can give the number and also you can adding here the maximum and the minimum value minimum is one and maximum you can using in the hundreds because we actually using it for the last hundred days okay and also value is required and you can say id is nothing but number of day and name is also number of day and the higher is user clicking to this predict button clicking to this predict button it will go to the next page that's called the result.html this is called result.html which are having some flaws but uh, let's try to go on the app.py file after that we're simply going to discussing all other things here because it having some flaw. okay so let's go on the app.py file and let's close one of them i mean all of them and now let's giving here the btc and let's try to click on predict okay yeah it will take in time because it is loading the data set from the uh, yahoo finance website and after it will showing this out now you can see result for btc usd okay if i go on that you can see result for btc now the stock is coming from this app.py file okay now let's go on the app.py file so first we actually importing in the flux let's say from flux we imported the flux and the random template why random template because it will random the templates from the templates folder then we actually importing here the request and redirect as well as the url for so url for is nothing but used for the jinja template because you also going to send some data from uh, this app.py file to our index.html file or the result.html file and after that we imported the pandas numpy yahoo yahoo finance y finance and also load model this load model actually help us to loading our saved model file our pretend model file and then we import in here the mean max scalar matplotlib matplotlib the spy plot io base 64 and the data and also you can see here matplotlib.useagg this is the aggregations why this aggregation aggregations because see we actually using here the html content i mean our web browser and try to show it inside the html not the notebook because this matplotlib is nothing but one gui graphical user interface if you are to show it if you are to show it in html you can show it you have to aggregate it in our HTML file that's why you're using here this matplotlib.use a g z okay you are to showing it inside our HTML file because you are not showing it in the Jupyter notebook you're going to showing it in HTML and after that we're simply going to creating here one app that's called app equal to flux underscore underscore name let's drink some water well now we're simply going to load our model load our model okay load model and inside that we're giving here the path of our model file that's called model.keras now this is the helper function to convert this matplotlib plots to html see why because we see that matplotlib is nothing but one gui graphical user interface okay it is showing this in the graphical user interface format so we need to convert this matplotlib graph or flaws to the html so for that we define here functions called float to html which are taking one figure and after that you're taking one buffer of the io using the input output library and after that it is saving this figure in the format of png in the format of png then after that we're seeking for the buffer of zero and using this base 64 we're simply going to encode this buffer and after this is simply going to decode it in the ascii format then we're simply going to uh, actually uh, close this buffer and we simply going to returning here one format of data now this is converted into in html data now we can simply going to float it in our html file now let's go on this route if the route is nothing but our initial route and also if the request of the method is nothing but the post method if i go inside index.html you can see here method is the post method that's when we can taking the data from the users now we can take in the data from dot that get using the stock so stock is nothing but this one this name is stock and using this one we can taking our stock and number of deaths and after that we need to redirect our url to the predict 
when I click in, when the user clicking this predict button, uh, if I go on here, if the user clicking on this predict button, it will redirect to the another pages. Okay, it will redirect to the another pages. Okay, nothing but the result pages. Now we need to redirect to the data URL for the predict, and also we need to pass in here our stock and the number of deaths. And otherwise, if it having some error, we need to returning the same template. Let's say if I am not giving here the stock or the dash, it will redirect to the same pages. It is not coming for the result pages. Now it will redirect to the predict functions. This predict one. And this predict is taking this stock from the using this arcs method and taking the stock and the number of deaths. Now we have all the data. Now what I can do, we can simply going to fetch our stock data from the Y Finance website. So for that, we can using here the end and the start and also the same thing for the stock data and also checking that if the stock data is empty or not. Let's say if you're giving here one invalid stock, it should be the invalid stock ticker or the no data is available that like this error it is showing up. Okay. If the stock data is empty, if the stock data is not empty, we don't go to the, we don't give the permission to give to the result or HTML file. And after that, we to do the data preparations. We're simply going to do the same thing for the splitting length, the X test, the scalar, the scale data, same things we do on here. And after the same thing for the data preparations and also same thing for the pre predictions. And also you can see here, we do the same plotting. Okay, prepare the data for the plotting. Same plotting, we do all the preparation from that. And after that, we gen generate the plot for the uh, original to the closing prices, original versus predictive test data. Okay, then the future prediction, do the same code, same code that we do in here okay in here you can see same code this is same code okay don't worry about that you will get this all the code in the free description of the github link and after that we do the same thing for the you can see future close price prediction same thing here okay and then we simply going to render template inside our result.html and then we actually set here the stock the original floor the predictive floor the feature floor, the enumerate, enumerate function so that it can enumerate in the data based on the day and the future predictions. So this is nothing but coming from here. Say coming from here, we convert them in the plot to HTML. You see, in the last, at the last, you need to also call in this method that's called plot to HTML because you are going to plot it in the form of HTML. That's why you need to call in this one. And then it will actually give me return here one data and this data you need to show it in your applications. Now you this you simply going to pass in this data inside our render template as a parameter. Okay. Now this data is taken from this result.html. And if it is error, it will show that danger, error, invalid stock data like this one. Okay. Then else it will showing this time, uh, it's floating this original flaw, the predicted flaw, the feature plot, and also the day and the predictions. And also you can say the day, the prices in enumerator the future prediction because instead of future predictions. We having all of the predictions with the dash. Okay, simple thing, simple thing. Let's go on the applications and uh, that's our applications, right? And let's get back to here, back to home. And let's say giving here one wrong name. Let's say uh, like this way. And if I click on predict, just to wait, it will give you the error. You can see embedded stock ticker or data not available. Okay, not available. Okay, so you can simply go into uh, okay, back to home is not working. <laughs> any any error okay 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 uh, i hope so to close in the second and try to run it again okay okay we need to run it from here okay okay i can go on here i can close it out and now let's go on here and search for another let's call btc uh we can using here let's say usd we can using here the another one for the predictions. Let's say H B T C U S D. Let's use this one. Let's say Habui B T C U S D and P two can also be uh, uh, Bitcoin U S D. Okay. So let's go on here and let's open this out. Yeah, it's running up and down. And let's go on here. And we can give here name. Let's call H B T C U S D. Load hoja, load hoja, load hoja. Thoda time lagta hai par. So let's see that this is also cryptocurrency. You can see this one cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency like this way. So we can using here this is BTC USD and let's click on predict. And this one is nothing but the entity name. Okay. 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 It's loading the data from the Yahoo Finance website. This is really a good website that you can see 
the closing price how look like uh, and you can see it's nothing but four five three one zero this is nothing but the hbtc usd okay cool not so bad okay let's checking on one is btc uh, two usd okay now it's it's showing here the bitcoin not the hbtc okay no problem but it's really working very fine okay and also you can see uh, if i go on here and go on the let's say okay let's open first the simulator and let's go on the full screen mode and you can see that uh, the application is also responsive okay and back to home and if i go on that the mobile devices and you can see here this is also a responsive website okay you can see you can see the flat on the you can see galaxy j flip okay you can see the data if i go on the macbook here and then you can see it's also responsive at all and same thing for the galaxy tab you can see this one same if i go on the iphone ipad ipad pro 11 and also let's go for the iphone 14 or 12 or 13 pro max okay cool let's go on the 13 pro max and then we can see this one load hoja load hoja now it's see six nine three two five six is nothing but the predictions okay not so bad not so bad predictions okay and you can also open the watch that you can see apple watch <laughs> let's uh, go on here plotting should be small you can also zoom it out okay you can see the cryptocurrency it's not responsive at all for this <laughs> small device you can see nine three two five six okay okay back to home <laughs> okay and let's go on the mobile phone let's say uh xiaomi 12 okay this is the mobile phone that you can see okay so that's it for today now and hope you enjoy this full tutorial and make sure you subscribe to our channel and share it with your friend and you guys really give me so many response in our multiverse series and i'll be back with the other tutorial so till then take care and bye bye